decided to do a calendar story time video to showcase four of my recently done paintings for the fantasy art calendar I make yearly with some interesting narration and I hope you enjoy. So I saved the upper layer with the creature and imported it into a separate file that's more the correct size and shape for the calendar and quickly repainted or resized the background to fit and did two separate versions but a lot faster than painting them completely from scratch so that it would work better for the video. So this is a creature I made up. It's called Alawaibai, which is a powerful fey creature, also sometimes called the Fey of Joy's Wish. They are good and full of positivity. They grant wishes and magically show up. Rumors of how powerful they are at traveling through space, time, and dimensions persist, but they're quite mysterious. Each individual looks slightly different than the others, but they have certain things in common. And they only grant wishes that are good or neutral. So it can be selfish, but it can't be something that would be considered evil. And this determination is made by the Fae. So unlike a genie, they're not forced or enslaved to grant wishes. They choose to grant them, and they choose who they're granting them to. In rare cases, there is a way of summoning them, but you can never truly compel them. So they get to choose if they grant the wish or not. This individual is Leilani Olia. And they have no real gender, but they can transform into different forms and take gendered forms. Most people only realize what they are when they take their true form, which is a quadrupedal or six-legged mammalian base with the three tails, antennae, often scales or feather details, and different spotting. They have living jewelry and gemstones in their body, and translucent segmented wings that vary by individual. There's more about them, so let me know in the comments if you want to know more about them. For this painting, I started with a photograph of my thumbnail sketch from my sketchbook that I then imported into Procreate on a separate layer. Then I did a sketch over top of that to get that sketch more clearly defined. And now I'm working in separate layers. I quickly paint in the background and rough in the far away blurry coral. I'm using the layers effectively and I'm using a bunch of different brushes. Some textured brushes, some painting brushes including some really good skin texture brushes I got for free for Procreate, which ended up being really good when enlarged to paint the details on the coral. The creature is a different species, but as mentioned in a previous video, a Nile Aqua, which is a mer deer or mer antelope. I've seen a lot of people do hippocampus, which is a mer horse, but I don't see people do mer deer and mer antelope, and I think they're beautiful. I could do a different one for the rest of my life, and each individual and species would vary enough that I don't think I'd duplicate myself. The thing is, you can make them very, very different from each other. There's a lot of real antelopes and deer to base things on, and such an unlimited number of fish that the combinations are innumerable. I also find that I tend to make the coloration either more fish-based or more antelope-based, and it depends on what mood I'm in for the species I'm doing at the time. At the very end, I'll show you the corrected calendar piece where I fix that near leg to make it look a bit better. I'm working in several layers, and for the shadows here I did a multiply layer and I used a bluish green. I also used several brushes I got for free as well as default brushes and a couple brushes I made myself to get some texture in the water and glows. I'm adding an eel I made up here to add more to the background. I also imported this other fish I made up and very shortly we'll overlay it with blue because that pink shouldn't be so bright as pink is one of the first colors you stop being able to see in the water. I also repositioned the eel. The hen's ears wrasse is the fish I imported from an older painting, and the other one I repainted is called the gomar eel. They are both species of mythical fish that I made up. And as I continue on here, I'm just adding more details. Now you can see the repainted calendar size where I actually fixed that leg. So for this one here, I repainted a Henyari griffin because I tried to paint it not too long ago and it was really good, but I made several mistakes. So re-looking at it, I decided I wanted to repaint this one and I'm not sure if I'm actually using it for the calendar or not, but it's going to be one of my options. So you can see a bunch of information on the screen if you wanted to pause there. I think looking at your artwork and still enjoying it and what's good about it, but also being able to see what's wrong and where you made a mistake and being willing to fix it or repaint a painting is very important for self-improvement. So here's all the things that are facts about the creature, but also parts that are what I didn't like. I looked at a reference of a cat jumping. I very much advise you get photo reference of cats jumping to use as a base for a griffin and then reference of birds flying, which have a similar wing type to the species of griffin you're designing and similar tail types, 
I also advise you do feathered tails on a griffin, just for the logic of them being able to fly. I worked out the sketch and then I'm fixing things here. I'm making sure to try to get things close to the reference pose, but I'm clearly painting my own mythical species and not copying directly from the reference. I'm not going to show the references I used here, but you should know that the core of the body was taken from a cat jumping and that the wings were taken from an eagle in flight. But I didn't copy them exactly, and I changed them into my own species. That's what's important. The reference should be there to work for you and your artwork, not the other way around. Don't be a slave to your reference. The reference should work for you. And this is another painting that counts as part of my Project Imagiscria, which is the world I'm working on. I'm going to talk more about that project later, but suffice to say I intend to make my audience vote on things and help create the world with me, but right now I just don't have a large enough audience for anyone to help participate yet. But someday people will be helping me build characters, worlds, cities, and stories for this world, and I hope we can all work on it together. I'm coming up with the basis myself, and I will be the one who has most control over the world in the end. For May, which is Month of the Serpent, I have this repaint of a very old painting I've been intending to do for many years, which is a leaf coatl. Leaf coatls are a species of winged, magical, intelligent, fully sold, fully sentient snakes that I made up for various fantasy worlds. They are a type of guardian of the forest and are based on the basic mythology of coatls or the Quetzalcoatl mythology from ancient Aztec mythos. They supplement their diet with photosynthesis as they are part plant as well as part animal, part bird and part reptile. They are also able to use many magical powers with powers varying by individual. Many have powers over plants in the wood, druidic magic, psionic abilities, and they can communicate telepathically with anything, plant, animal, people, all kinds, as long as they are within 100 feet of them. And some individuals have a longer range than that. They often train druids of humanoid races and preside over large territories. They are rarely common on the worlds they are in, and they are long-lived and wise. Many people come to consult with them for advice and information, for they have long memories and learn many things in their lives. Leaf coatls are able to eat meat and often do so, but they do not eat the flesh of sentient creatures. I find them to be a beautiful representation of the balance of nature and the different sides, both predatory and more peaceful, both plant and animal. And my old painting, which I did I think in 2011, um, was one of the best paintings of that year, but it actually had the wings closed and the flower closed with the leaf covers over the flower, so it was a much more camouflaged painting, and I've been intending for many years to paint a version with the wings open and the flower open. I'm glad I waited this long because I recently downloaded some free scale brushes for Procreate and they're extremely useful. As you saw though, I had to correct areas where there was lines overlapping and painted a bunch of scales individually, so I advise you don't expect the scale brush to just automatically do everything on its own. I also used a variety of other texture and specialty brushes, but the main bulk of this painting was done with the standard painting brush in Procreate. I worked on layers so I could import the snake on the branch into a different file to resize it for the calendar art and I just repainted the background for that one. Here I'm adding more details and textures and for this painting I used a reference of a snake on a tree branch. Actually I used several separate references and didn't exactly copy any of them to make my own painting. I also used reference of an owl for the wings. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I did work on doing more transitions and adding text as I learned to get better at video editing. Over time, I hope to improve the quality of my videos. I hope to see you next Wednesday for a new video.